bridge government with the citizens, bridge corporations with the consumers. And uh, so uh, we were able to get the national government to provide the land, and we were able to go get corporations to provide the, 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 the homes and some partners to provide the schools and to provide the programs. Even the government of Singapore pro and, and uh, corporations and, and, and or schools in Singapore provided us the feeding program uh, for us to be able to, to, to uh, get uh, about 3,000 of the kids in Baseco out of malnutrition. And uh, so uh, when we entered the place, there was high crime and uh, there were five syndicates that were operating in the area. Uh, one is we had the land syndicates that were renting a land that they didn't own. We had the water syndicate. Uh, we had the, uh, electricity sent the, the, the electricity syndicate, so the poor were also paying more than double for electricity. We had the drug syndicate. We had the crime syndicate. But what we discovered in Baseco was that 95% of the informal settlers there before came from the provinces. So most of them were from Samar, Leyte. And then so the most notorious gangs in Manila are the Waray Warais, the... Uh, they came from Negros, where I come from, from Panay, the, the Okso Sigi Sigi, the Sputnik, the Paracali boys from, from Bicol, and so on. And so we also, from there, we realized that we have to really intensify our effort in the countryside. And the first thing is to really be able to address the issue of social justice. Because, uh, you know, when people do not have land, then they have no homes to build in safe areas. And so it's the victims of... Uh, typhoon, calamities, the, buds, the mudslide, the, uh, the volcanic eruptions, uh, those are the informal settlers, you know, that eventually migrate to the urban area to squat, and it is also the cause of insurgency in the countryside, because uh, poverty has brutalized the Filipino. He's normally caring, he's sharing, he's hardworking, but when he is living without dignity, without security, without dreams and aspirations, then he becomes predatory, and I call this the... I, I have my own uh, theory of the five S's of sustainable poverty. As people talk about sustainable development, we have to understand the nature of our poverty. So the first is that, the first S, the five S's of sustainable poverty. First is that the Filipino uh, lives in a shanty. No, no, no dignity, no dignity, no, no, no uh, uh, clean water, no clean toilet. And the second is that he's, uh, well, he's a squatter no informal settlers, so no land security, no dreams and aspirations. And in the urban areas, he also is living in a slum, dangerous slums, troubled, and where the kids cannot, are not motivated to go to school. The fourth S is, uh, is subsistence, subsistence uh, economy. So in the countryside, our people are into a slash, uh, slash and burn ka, uh, kaingin activities, a slash and burn subsistence farming. And that's why we call them uh, isang kahig, isang tuka. And then, uh, and uh, they also now are in a survival mode. That's the fifth S. That's why they also become predatory, kapit sa patalim. You know? So again, unless we understand the nature of poverty and address this effectively through a massive response, because poverty is so massive, our response cannot be small. So it cannot, our response cannot be a small project, isolated project here or there, and people talk about exit strategy before they even begin. And I, it cannot be a program because unless it is holistic and at least and unless that we work with others, it's collaborative. It cannot be transformative. And so we, we realize that the, it has to be a, a massive movement with a clear vision. So in 2003, when we began the process, we thought we articulated our vision of 777, uh, GK777, to be able to uh, help 700,000 families in 7,000 communities in seven years. So the first phase, we're done with it. You know, we have not built all the uh, 700,000 homes, but now uh, the presidential candidates I talked to have endorsed uh, that by when they win, it, they will legislate that the government will fund five million houses, you know, for in 50,000 communities. But I will not tell you which one's committed. <laughs> but again, uh, landlessness. Uh, uh, that in the last seven years, we have been able to really trigger massive land banking and land donations that we now have over 10,000 hectares for one million families. So that's over our target. So we need more corporations to donate houses so we can build uh, uh, the community platform, which is essential you know, for, for sustainable development. But what is important for us to realize here that we have to create impact. You know, uh, and, and, uh, and it, the, that, that change has to be, transformation has to be visible, it has to be uh, participative, it has to be measurable, 
And uh, the second, it has to have scale. You cannot call it nation building. It cannot address the massive poverty if, it is, if you do not have scale. And this is through partnership with local government. We are now in partnership with over 400 uh, mayors and uh, in, with about almost 50 governors. And so we are bigger than many political parties, although we're nonpartisan. But then again, it's really engaging people and just realizing that this goes beyond any political administration. You know, it's just like Nestle. You know, they don't uh, really care who, be is, you know, that who buys their products because they're inclusive. And development has to be inclusive. It cannot be, uh, be exclusive. And so it's, uh, uh, it's, it's Christians and Muslims also uh, patronizing uh, uh, Nestle because it's a good product. But at the same time, everyone, Muslims, Christians, uh, private citizens, the most powerful, the wealthiest, they have to also now work together to build a nation that will be of uh, benefit and value to all. And so uh, we realize that we have to build, uh, we have to bridge need with resource, uh, government with the citizens. Second is that we have to engage ed everyone. We should not judge anyone as corrupt, although they probably are. But then again, uh, I realize that you, now human being is totally corrupt. Even if he has only 10% uh, good in him, you have to engage the 10% good and you bring them into your own playing field of integrity. Because it's important here two things that we must, I always consider. One is value, shared value. And that's why while we have the vision, we have to, to achieve that vision through values that we, and, and also principles. And so it's about our values are caring, sharing, and about sacrifice for the good of others, beyond, going beyond self-interest so that there will be about in abundance for all. So if I, you know, if I, by, 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 part, by engaging every polit politician, uh, then uh, the 10% good, you know, might become 20. But if I engage all 1,500 mayors, then we will be able to create the collective good, you know, that will end landlessness and end homelessness in this country. And so in, uh, in, in, in July, we were able to get the assurance of many congressmen and uh, that is, uh, we said we will pray for you that you will win so that you can co-author the bill. You know, we call it the Kalinga Bills, which, me, which is also uh, that, uh, that to build uh, Gawad Kalinga communities in every barangay in the country. That's 44,000 barangays now, but we're looking at about 50,000 barangays for about 5 million Filipino families or 25 million Filipinos. And uh, we're looking at the bottom 20% of the population. Then creating that massive community-based platform where you trigger a lot of, uh, you, you, you motivate people to, to send their children to school, the parents to work, particularly the men, because the we, poverty also, are, we, we are not only migratory, but we are also uh, mercenary, uh, 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 mendicant, and so we have also to go simply beyond our begging culture, you know, and go for stewardship, authentic stewardship, because we have a rich land and very fertile land and very rich in terms of natural resources, very talented and creative people. So we go for, 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 for stewardship. And, and so we, we, we engage everyone and uh, we engage uh, uh, corporations uh, through shared uh, values because it is uh, nation building is good business. And, uh, and, uh, and so uh, we, also the, the, we also learn to leverage that uh, we, can, we can have greater impact if we leverage the limited resources of government with the resources of business, with the resources of the study, research, and whatever st uh, the schools can contribute, uh, NGOs, and, and, and uh, civil society, and so on. And so then, then we build, you know, because it cannot, uh, we still ha we have to build first and then tell our story. You know? And that's why I can tell about the story of Nestle, because it's on the ground. It's hope that you can see, that you can touch, and it's real people whose lives have been transformed. And I was so happy because I, some of the kids in Baseco were able to pass the La Salle exam. We now have 17 from our own depressed communities who will be enrolling in La Salle and CSB this year. You know? so, and they